I got a very special message that I'm, I have to get out to my family and my friends, to my brothers and sisters in the Lord, and to the watchmen and watchwomen who know who I am and I know who you are. If you have not heard about this information, maybe some of you have, please pass it on. Please pass it on. Get the message out there because we're very close. The, the hour is short. The hour is short. The 2014 could very well be the year that the Lord returns for his bride. All right, so here's, here's the deal. Today is January 1st, 2014. It's in the evening. It's about 6, a little after 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. I had no intentions on doing this video. Uh, I came up to check my emails out, and all of a sudden, I got this email regarding Ariel Sharon. He, uh, he's 85 years old. He's been in a coma since 2006, seven years he's been in a coma. And it, it came over the press today, on Wednesday, January 1st, 2014, that his condition has significantly worsened. He's apparently having some liver issues, and his liver is beginning to fail. And I don't know what, what they can do and how long they can hold him out, but once he starts deteriorating uh, and he passes away, things are going to begin to happen. Now, some of you might want to know, you know, where's the connection here? Why are you bringing this up? Because how, where is there a connection here? Well... Back in 2006, a rabbi by the name of Rabbi Kaduri had a prophecy. He actually saw the Messiah, he wrote the name down of the Messiah, and he said, don't open it for you until one year after his passing. That was his, his instructions. So he died, he wrote down the name of the Messiah, and then a year after, he, they opened it up, and the name that he wrote down for the name of the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah, was Yehoshua, and that's Yeshua. That's Hebrew for Yeshua, which is in English, Jesus. And so it was con controversial. His son didn't believe that he wrote that. It was in his handwriting. His two associates were the ones that sealed the envelope, and they're not Bible-believing Christians. They had no reason to... to not, they didn't even know what was in the note, but they said it was sealed for a year. And, and uh, anyway, I'm going to put some links on there so you can read that for yourself if you're interested. And here's the point that I want to make. Rabbi Kaduri, and he died at about 100, I think it was 108 years old is, is what he was, but one of the things he said there is that the Lord told him, the Lord Yeshua told him, that shortly after Ariel Sharon passes away, he's going to come back. He's, he's returning. And so, I'm telling you, could it be 2014? I don't know. Uh, but I needed to get this message out there. I thought this is a perfect time to do it, to start off the, the new year right and, um, and share a little bit about what is possibly going to happen if this, this, if this comes to fruition. All right? I believe that Rabbi Kaduri saw the Lord. I really do. And I believe that what he said about Ariel's passing is absolutely 100% correct. And I believe that the Lord, when he returns, he's coming back for his bride for the pre-tribulation rapture. All right. Now, um, if you miss the rapture, here's the thing that I wanted to share with you. Uh, the Lord says that in Matthew 24, he's, He essentially said that they'll be cast into outer darkness. And um, for many years, people thought outer darkness was a portion of hell and, and all that. And maybe maybe there's a double meaning to that. I believe that some scripture does have a double meaning, like. Like, for example, when the Lord called his son out of Egypt, you can attribute that to his son being the Lord Yeshua and his son being Israel. Both apply. And that's a double meaning there. And so this, there could be a double meaning here. I'm not saying that the outer darkness is only the tribulation or only hell. But I think that according to the Matthew 24 scripture and uh, others, that there's merit to that. And I learned that through Perry Stone who said he learned it through a gentleman back in the early 1990s that the outer darkness that the Lord was referring to there is the tribulation. Now let me read you a verse here in Zephaniah. Zephaniah 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 14. It's talking about the great day of the Lord. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, the, great day, the great day of the Lord is near. It is near. And hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty men shall cry there bitterly. 
And in Matthew, I don't have it opened up anymore here, it talks about how the mighty men, here it is, uh, it's 24, chapter 24, verse 30, and cast ye unprofitable servant into dark, dark, outer darkness, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Well, Zephaniah 1.14 says that this is where the mighty men will cry there bitterly. It's talking about the tribulation. Some people talk, I, I get... I, I know a lot of people, and I know there's a lot of different opinions on eschatology. I get some people that say, we, don't, we won't even know it when we enter into the tribulation. Well, I believe that you're not only going to know it, but you're going to weep there bitterly knowing that you were left behind. And there's a way that you don't have to be left behind for the first fruits of the barley harvest. You can make that. Luke 21, 34 through 36 says, pray earnestly that you would escape that day. That day is the day of God's wrath. The very first day, the beginning of the tribulation. Now let me pan off here and show you some dates that I think are significant here for 2014. <clears throat> Alright, this is my first video that I'm doing here in my new office slash studio, so I don't know how well you're going to be able to see the writing on the wall, but uh, I'm going to try to explain it to you here. If we can go over here, uh, if you've listened to my last upload of my radio broadcast, I talk a little bit about the blood moon, red moons and the tetrad that's coming here. Here in 2014, significant, significant, significant times are coming here. And uh, basically, the very first one's going to come in April of 2014. Then the second one is October of 2014. And then the third one is April of 2015. And then the fourth one is se late September of 2015. Here's what I find absolutely interesting about these red moons. Um, I talked a little bit about this in my radio program, but I'm just going to kind of rehash it a little bit here. In 1948-49, we had our first uh, tetrad of the 20th century, and that after that tetrad came and gone, essentially the Jews got back the uh, uh, nation of Israel. They, they came back to their land, essentially. And uh, in 68 and 67, 67, 68, they got the uh, city of Jerusalem back. There was another tetrad on those, on those two years. Now we have 2014-15, and it is believed by many that this is when they're going to get their temple mount back. But hold on a second here. The Muslims are not going to hand it over to them. There's going to be war. We're heading for a time of war. John Kerry, literally just yesterday, I got something over the hot wire. John Kerry is going to be... He came out, and he's going to, and by April, he says there's going to be peace. They're going to have peace. They're going to force it down. And, you know, Paul says when they say these things, peace and safety and, oh, yeah, no, no, we've got the right concoction here. We'll make it work. Uh, he says sudden destruction. I'm telling you right now, we'll probably be at war in 2014, maybe 2015, if it doesn't happen in 2014. Ariel Sharon, if he passes this year, if his, you know, his organs begin to fail him, that start with his liver, then the Lord said through the rabbi, uh, Kaduri, that his return will come shortly after that. If you studied, if you if you've, are familiar with any of my studies, you know that I believe with all of my heart the Lord is going to return sometime uh, in the fall of the year for his bride on the Feast of Rosh Hashanah. Let me just do this here. I, I have these dates written out here. Um... Well, I already talked about the first blood red moon coming in April. This is 2014 now. I'm not going to touch on 2015 yet. We'll just stay here. Uh, if you are familiar with my... Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this for you. Hold on one second. All right, I, I broke away because I had to go get my son's iPod. Pad, iPod and I wanted to show you something. I, I also mentioned this in my... Uh, my radio program I upload, but I'm going to actually do it for you so you see what's going on here because July 27th, 2014, if you have an iPad or an iPod or an iPhone and you have Siri on it, I want you to do this. I'm going to do it for you here in this video, but it says that the gates of hell are going to open on July 27th, 2014. Again, I'm not building doctrine around it. I just find it interesting, but and it's something just to kind of look at. As somebody like me that has the knowledge that I have about our, the last day events, I take that serious, but not enough to really put a, a lot of stock in. So, I'm out of breath. I ran downstairs <laughs> to get this thing. So, here we go. 
What is... I didn't quite get that. Okay, I didn't do it here. Hold on. Here we go. What is July 27th, 2014? It's Sunday, July 27th, 2014. Opening gates of Hades. All right, so I wanted to I wanted to do that for you. So you actually saw that on this video. What uh, if you haven't heard about that yet? Again, I've I've looked into this a little bit. There they have had some glitches in the past. I just want to make sure I get off here far enough. They have had some glitches in the past with Siri. This could be one of those glitches. I don't know, but it seems like all this stuff is starting to come kind of come out. You know, you got Ariel Sharon, you got the prophecy from Rabbi Kaduri. You got Ariel Sharon possibly going to pass away this year. His his uh, they, I mean. Usually the reports that come out about him are promising. They're, oh, he's doing very well. He's hand movements, eye movements. You know, his family's uh, very, very uh, upbeat about everything. Now, this report was the first negative report that I've received in like two or three years. That's why I'm really excited about all this stuff. Not, not his passing, but what this all means for the body of Christ, for the rapture of the church, and for the beginning of the tribulation. We're very close. We're very, very close. So here's the deal. I just did that, uh, that for you. This is the Gates of Hell, July 27, 2014. Uh, uh, and then I always thought, you know, what I did is, how does this apply to what I know using, you know, the information that I have, you know, eschatology, the feasts of God and all that. The only thing that I could see that even was remotely close to this date is the August 4th and 5th date, which is the 9th of Av. And so, could something happen where... You know, this is Ramadan, by the way. July 27th is on or around Ramadan. Could the Antichrist... You know, I've taught for many years that we would not know who the Antichrist is. Could he be revealed here? Not necessarily in power, but he could, could he be revealed as an influential person? Like, whoa, who's this guy? He just came on the scene. He's a new guy now. Let's keep our eyes on him. And then a week later, the 9th of Av is generally a very negative day for the Jews. You, I don't have time to talk about it in this video, but if you have a friend that's a Jewish, religious-believing Jew, you ask them about the Ninth of Av, and they'll sit down with you for an hour and tell you all about what that means to them, how negative it is to the Jew and to Israel as a nation. And then we have September 24th through the 26th of 2014. This is Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets. This is what I believe will be the uh, rapture of the church one of these years on or around Rosh Hashanah. you got to remember now, Paul says that it's going to happen at the last trumpet, but he also says that the dead in Christ will rise first, and then those who are alive and, that, and remain will be taken up. It could be that the dead in Christ, I'm just going to throw a theory out there, the dead in Christ rise first, meet the Lord in the clouds, that's at the last trumpet. It may take a day or two for us then to be raptured up. We don't go simultaneously. Paul specifically says the dead go first, and then we go for then then we go after them. Now, if you take a look at Matthew twenty-five, the ten, the parable of the ten virgins, just take a very careful look at this. A lot of people just read over it, but it says at the beginning that uh, maybe I'll just read it. If I got time here to find it real quick, it basically says that the ten virgins they all went out to they ran out to meet him, and in the clouds, pardon me. The clouds. All right, so let me just. Uh, yeah. All right, so then, then uh, Jesus says that the parable of the ten virgins. Matthew 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. All ten of them went out there to meet the bridegroom. But what does it say? And five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And here's the, here's the verse 5 is, is the verse that I wanted to kind of share with you. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. First of all, the Lord's coming back for a sleeping bride. Number one to look at. I don't think there's going to be this huge revival that everybody's been talking about. But, somehow, some way, shape, or form, all of them ran out to meet him. Could it be that we all think, most of us that, that study this stuff, a lot of us think that it's going to happen on Rosh Hashanah, 
Rosh Hashanah comes and it goes. We fall into the, after the 26th, we got the 27th, the 28th, the 29th. Maybe he returns shortly after that. But still sometime within the 10 days of awe. I don't know. I'm only speculating here because uh, that's all you can do with regards to this, these verses. you you got to put two and two together sometimes. And that's where we lay line upon line and precept upon precept. I'm just saying there's, there's something to that. Because Paul says the dead will go first and then those that are alive. All right, And then Jesus says that they all ran out to meet him. They all had an idea that he's coming back at a certain time, a certain season. Paul says we're not left in the dark. All right, in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We could know the season of his return. We can't know the day or the hour. Okay, There's no way you could know the day or the hour anyway because this falls on two days. So uh, my whole point is uh, it could be that if Ariel Sharon dies in 2014, then we know then... You're going to hear, I'm telling you right now, you're going to hear a lot of people like me saying, this is the rapture. The rapture is going to happen now on or around Rosh Hashanah. If he dies, I'm going to, keep the, I'm going to watch that very, very carefully. Well, then on October 3rd and the 4th, we have Yom Kippur. Now, let me say that correctly. It's Yom Kippur. <laughs> I always say it wrong, and I don't mean to, but uh, going back to Zephaniah, when I talked about Zephaniah chapter 1, let's see if I can find it quick here. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14. And I'm telling you that when Jesus said in Luke 21, 34 through 36, he said, pray that you're counted worthy to escape that day. This is that day, Yom, Yom Kippur. This is that day. This is the first day of the wrath of God. This is the day that the, the, gate, the, the door to heaven uh, shut. All right? All uh, right. Right now, between in the ten days of Ah, this is a Jewish thing. Now, the gates of heaven, or the, the window of heaven, the door of heaven, essentially is opened. Okay, but now at this time, right here, it closes. It closes, and so what happens when it closes? Well, you're, the door closes. Uh, Revelation chapter four, verse one. It was open. John was in heaven. Now when that that door opened, but then what does it say in Matthew twenty four, or twenty five, with the ten virgins? It shut, and they came weeping. Let us in, let us in. And it was too late. They lived foolish lives, even though they're Christians. Now they have to go through the tribulation, and in Revelation chapter 20, it tells us how these Christians that are in the tribulation now have to die. They're going to be beheaded for the Lord Jesus Christ in his testimony. That's how they're going to die. And we read in chapter 6 and 7 that they, their bodies now are under the, uh, the throne of God in, in heaven. You know, remember? And the angel says to John, who are they? And John says, I don't know. You know who they are. And the angel says, these are they who got their robes whitened in the, with the blood of a lamb in the, tri the great tribulation. In the great tribulation. So I'm telling you, Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14 is the great day of the Lord. It says, the great day of the Lord. When they're cast into outer darkness, there's no way you can escape that. You have to experience whatever you have to experience at that point. There's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of Christians. That are going to, you, you, I get people telling me all the time, even born-again Christians, are you telling me that born-again Christians are not going to make the rapture? Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Revelation chapter 2 and 3, specifically the Lord's coming back and rebuking the church, telling that not the world, the church, you must repent, you must, you must repent. And in chapter 2, he talks specifically to a specific church, Let's see if I can find it here, In chapter 2, he says, to Jezebel, the spirit of Jezebel has entered the church, in this particular church. Uh, uh, pardon me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's chapter 2, verse 21. He says, uh, uh, he gave them a space, a span of time to repent, of their fornication, and they did not repent. And so he says they will. he will cast them and her into the great tribulation unless they repent. So there's an opportunity. If you're not living a very clean life before the Lord Jesus Christ, before the Lord Yeshua, and we all have to wrestle with fear and trembling, our salvation with the Lord, it says in the book of Hebrews. We must, we must wrestle our salvation. We can't trust another man. 
We can't trust our works. We can't trust none of that. We have to go before the Lord on our own and say, listen, I, want, I don't want to miss the rapture of the church. I don't want to miss it. What do I have to do to clean up my life? And the Holy Spirit is the one that does the cleansing. He'll begin to convict you of sin. Sin that you may not even know is in your life right now. And there's sin that we obviously know that's in our life. And we have to deal with that. Every one of us. Nobody is exempt. No one. So Rosh Hashanah will be the rapture. The Yom, Yom Kippur will be the first day, the very first day, of the wrath of God, the wrath of the Lamb, which is the tribulation. The first three and a half years is the wrath of the Lamb. The second three and a half years is the wrath of God, Yahweh. So what is October 8th uh, through the 15th then of 2014? That's Tabernacles, and that will be the sandwich. Now you got your first blood red moon that's going to happen in April here. Then your second blood red moon is going to happen in October of 2014. What? Here's what I find fascinating about this. I'm just going to do one more scripture here. Uh, I just find this absolutely fascinating. If Ariel Sharon passes away, if some of this stuff begins to, I mean, if we begin to see war happening and just stuff's going on, then I believe that Revelation chapter 6, verse 12, it said that, uh, I beheld when the, uh, they opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. If the rapture of the church happens right here, this is the first day of uh, uh, the tribulation, this blood red moon right here is the blood red moon of Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. Mark my words. Now, it could be that it doesn't happen this year. Maybe Ariel Shron doesn't pass away, or maybe our time when he does pass away, the Lord says he's coming shortly after. What does that mean? You know, What does that mean? Could that mean a year? Ten years? I don't know. I don't know. But my job isn't to really figure out the day or the hour or anything like that. I don't want to mislead anybody. My job is to try to get you your attention. I want you to know we are living in the last hour. We're so close. To the Lord's return. And the sad thing about it is not very many people are listening. Not very many people are taking this serious. Not very many. It could be that one of these two, it has to happen in the fall of the year. Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. That blood red moon of, of Revelation chapter 6, verse 12, could very well be one of these two blood red moons of, of the fall of 2014 or the fall of 2015. The tetrad, don't, don't take it lightly. This tetrad, something major is going to happen. It could just, uh, maybe if the only thing that happens is Israel is Israel gets their temple mount back and that's it. And maybe we're still waiting for the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38 and 39. I believe that war has to happen before the tribulation too. I really do. I'm going to be doing another teaching here. I wanted to wait until after my time of fasting here. Every January for the last, well, about the last three years, but I've been doing this fasting thing for the last four or five years. I used to do it on, on or around Passover. And I changed it because my I'm a real estate agent, so my business always picked up right around April, May, and uh, in March. So I moved it to January when I tend to be a little bit slower, and uh, this year is is no exception. So I am I had no intentions on doing this teaching, no intentions of, of of coming out and doing that until I saw that, and something just lit up on the inside of me, and I thought, you know what? Oh, wow, we're close. We're close. My brothers and sisters, please, please, take this message ever so seriously. Get your life right with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you've been judged already. That's what the scripture says. So, you've already been judged. But if you have it in your heart, and you say, you know what, there's something to this. Call upon his name. Call a friend. Who's been witnessing to you? There, I don't believe there's very many people that are living on this planet that have not been told or know where to go to ask somebody some very tough questions. Who is this Jesus? I want to get to know him. I want a personal relationship with him. He said, Jesus said himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can get to the Father except through me. And that's the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. He's the only one. Will you bend your knee to him today? Will you bend your heart to him? Will you bow your heart to him? It's easy to do. It's just hard to maintain. I mentioned in, in the book of Acts I had, a verse popped out at me the other day, 
I'll just read it here. I believe with all my heart, depending on how all these events happen and how they get fulfilled, that we're very, very close. And in Acts chapter 14, verse 22, the Apostle Paul says, We must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. They, Paul went through more, uh, pro Paul had some major problems in his uh, ministry. And I believe that us Christians, the true born-again believing Christians, are going to go through much tribulation here in the coming months, perhaps a year or two or three. However long this drags out, there's some time frames here. There's some things that I see, not very clearly, I don't know about the Ezekiel 38 and 39 passage. I think, with, I believe with all my heart that has to happen before the tribulation. That's just what I believe. That's what I see. That would mean that if the rapture ha is going to happen here in Rosh Hashanah of 2014, that would mean that um, the Psalm 83 passage would have to be fulfilled. That's where Israel annihilates her brothers, and her uh, neighbors, uh, uh, neighboring, neighboring nations, the enemy nations that are surrounding her. And then shortly after that, Ezekiel 38 and 39 would have to be fulfilled. And remember now, Paul says something. He says it's going to happen suddenly. Sudden destruction. Uh, we don't know. I mean, you could wake up one day and Israel could have been at war. And these battles now, they're not going to be like these weak need uh, battles that the United States have been doing in Iraq and, and um, in other parts of the, of the world. And kind of the way the war has been going on since the 60s in Vietnam and all that. Uh, it's going to be devastating highly devastating and to the point where I believe it's going to it's going to eventually move into World War III and I think that the United States of America is going to get hit. I don't know if it's going to take us out completely. Uh, some people, and I've studied, some people believe that the United States is going to be annihilated essentially uh, by the mid part of the tribulation. I don't know. Jonathan Kahn, I, I just uh, thought of this now, Jonathan Kahn has a very interesting perspective on this and he believes that by the September of 2015, according to some prophecy that he had been working on or whatnot, uh, from using scripture, he believes that the uh, United something very, very bad is going to happen in the United States of America by September of 2015. So whatever that is, I don't know. We're close. We're very close. And I've been prophesying that, I'm not a prophet, but I, I've been saying that since September 5th, 2009, when the Lord showed me that something very bad is going to happen to the United States of America, it's no different. We're very, very close. Very close. I actually thought something was going to happen in 2013, and it didn't. But that doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. Something bad is about to, it's brewing, and just watch this very carefully. If Ariel Sharon passes away in the next month or weeks, months, uh, we're on the, we're right there, we're on the a fast course to the rapture of the church. The only thing is, different people have different perspectives on when the rapture is supposed to be. Um, I'm going to come out with another teaching, maybe even sooner than what I anticipated in February, depending on what happens here with all this latest news. So, stay tuned, and may the Lord richly bless you. And what I mean by that is not monetarily, I want Him to meet your needs, but I want Him to bless you, to draw you to Him like a moth to the flame. If you do not know him as your personal savior, and you're teeter-tottering on the fence, or if, you're, if you have more of a relationship with a religion than you do with the Lord, a relationship with the Lord, uh, you need to repent of that and ask him in your heart, with all of your heart, ask him to be Lord and Savior. And he is, he's going to meet you right where you're at. You don't have to go and do anything. He's going to meet you right where you're at. All right? He is faithful, even when we're not faithful. The Lord richly bless you. In Jesus' name, shalom.